All right, so after uh, your feedback, I added some stuff to the script. Um, we fixed a bunch of bugs that I missed on first release and worked on some edge cases to give the system a visual consistency. So let me show you what's new. The setup is now really simple. You go into the workshop, you find your uh, simple inventory display, and you copy to editor, check the code, and press OK. And it works. What's Nagger doing over here? He's building a RAM. All right. First of all, all setup has now been moved to custom data. So there are four main variables. The first one is display block name. And you set this to whichever screen you want your uh, content to be on. So let's say it's LCD panel. Right, well, there's an LCD panel right now. But we can add one. What's this called? Let's call this LCD panel. There you go. Uh, at this point, this screen is dead. In this update, there's no uh, mirroring to multiple monitors. I'd like to do that in the future. And so I'm just going to hide it. There we go. The second parameter is hmm, display surface index. And this is for uh, things like control seats. So let me set the display block name to control seat. And let me make a control seat. Hey, look at this. The scaling is wrong, but we can change that. But this is called a control seat, and so it works. If we set the custom data to zero, it moves to the middle, right? The previous one is dead. I... Maybe for the next update, I will see if the script can turn off the previous display when you switch. Fuel critical. Oh my god, what is he doing? Nice. Anyway, the next parameter is. Show group boxes, axes, boxes. Mm, nothing's changing because that's not the seat. That's not the um, lock that's set. We can actually delete this, because we don't need it. There we go. <laughs> I'm guessing the ramp doesn't work. So what that did was it added these boxes behind the groups. Uh, they're not like super logical groups, they just kind of made sense when I was 
going through the numbers. So I grouped uh, what I call build components, uh, which are the steel plates, the interior plates, and all the stuff for like construction. And then you have the stuff for uh, weird parts, like the radio and the detectors and the medical and the thrusters and all that stuff. Uh, you have the things you can hold in a way, so that's bottles, canvases, and data pads, and then you have things you can shoot, and the tools. And then on left, the ores, the ingots are grouped, and then everything to do with ice. And everything to do with ice, and everything to do with ice is the following. Let's say I have a generator, like that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is put here an oxygen tank. And here a hydrogen tank. And so as you can see down here, I now show the oxygen and the hydrogen. Let's add some ice. There you go, so the same blinking like this before. Another thing you can see here is that I no longer show wide numbers, I just convert everything to uh, thousands which is with a K, millions which is with an M, and billions which is with a B. So all the numbers are compact. Another thing which you can see in the code is that now I set a number of uh, preliminary defaults for the ore limits and the component limits, which I got from the community. And these will probably uh, change with time as I get more feedback. Uh, I'm sure some of them are not. Like what I'm looking for in these uh, from you guys is, is a balance for, like as I said, this is meant for the starting stages of a larger operation or for smaller ships where you're not going to want to be separating your stuff so much. So I guess uh, what would be useful is a kind of average across all possible scenarios. Right, something that would not offend anyone too much when they had to go in and adjust the individual uh, limits. But here you have the uh, components, the ingots, and the ores. The ore is zero for most except for ice, uh, because I'm guessing you don't ever really want ore, you want ingots. But if for whatever reason you want ore, you know, you can set that. Another change is that if you have... So, let me talk about the colors of the lines. Alright, I need a... Cargo container. So let me put in here some iron. And... I guess I need a refinery. So, right now this is all below the limit. There's iron, but it's all red. That's because the limit for the ore is zero, which means... I'm guessing that didn't go as planned. Anyway, why is everything red? Well, the decision I made for this update, and you know, this is something we can discuss, and, and, and maybe you guys will move this with it, you need something else. Uh, but for now, it's... I gotta see this. Critical. I gotta see this.
come on. Yes, 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 yes. That was very underwhelming. <laughs> Alright. Good enough. Anywho. So you're shooting at the track because he's mad at the track. Yeah, nobody ever wants to admit their driving skills. Anywho. The limit for the iron ingots is 20k, right? Which means that the ingots right now are under their limit, while the ore is over its limit. But the decision I, I took was that it doesn't matter how much ore you have. Uh, again. Is that go park with a gun? <sighs> the decision I took is that you don't really care how much ore you have, except for ice. Uh, you care how many uh, ingots you have. So if you don't have enough ingots, regardless of how much ore you have, the line is red. And then once you have more ingots, the line becomes white. There you go. So once you have enough ingots, the line is white completely. And you can see that scrap is also white, because I figure scrap is... The only reason you ever need scrap is to get some iron. And so, scrap is essentially in the iron group. He's trying to push it out. <laughs> really? He's gonna shoot at it. Of course he's gonna shoot at it. Oh no. He's gonna run himself over. Another change is that you can now change the background color. Uh, I'm curious to see what people do with the colors because I can really, really foresee, like, uh, oh, let's see, let's do this. Let's do an orange. Uh, let's do a more real orange, like this. And then the valley color is going to have to be black. Um, the red, like, oh, red, it's going to have to be a dark red for the, for the nun color. And that's going to be like 22 and let's see, let's see, let's see. Right, let's see what this looks like. Whoa. Right. Well, as you can see, I cheated by making the boxes not transparent, which is dark gray. However, I don't think anything is stopping us from trying to make them transparent. There you go.
I mean, I don't even know if people want these boxes from me. They were just initially a way to align all the stuff and do the layout. <clears throat> but anyway, you can also make it look like this, which I guess is something. Whoa. Poor tractor. The last thing I want to show is this. What if your computer is not like this? What if your computer... ...looks like this. I can never weld these things. There we go. So let's see that this is your computer. And then when you put the script. Here you run into two problems straight away. The first one is that I haven't yet put in the code to figure out the proper screen size and texture size for this thing, for this small grid computer. Uh, but that can be fixed. You just go and uh, switch the content to text and images, and then you can make the no, not, and then you can make the font size smaller. So, uh, let's have a little bit more. Whatever. You can you know, get it closer. What is it with you and armed buggies? The second problem is that this is showing nothing because it's on a separate grid. And it's only showing things that are on this grid, which is for armor cubes. So what we can do is we can go over to the big grid, and see what it's called. And this is called standard grid 5 we'll copy that. And then we can go into the computer and in the custom data, put a variable called in grids. And there, separate by commas, you can list all the grids that you want included in the data collection. And there you go, now you see that it's looking also at this grid. And this can be used also, for example, for situations like if you're docking several ships together. For instance, let's say you have like an ore truck that you dock to your station regularly. And when it's docked, you want to see the contents of everything at the same time. Or like, you know, a module where you have a, a cargo module and something else module, and then you want to be able to see the contents when it's there and not see the contents when it's not. Right now there's one refinery and one something generator, and I'll talk about this in a minute. Let's add some more refineries. There we go. So here you see that the system has three refineries. And let's add some assemblies. Now you see that the system has two assemblies, right? Uh, if I turn off one of the refineries, 
then the display changes to show you that two of the three are on. Uh, if all of something is on, like with the assemblies, you see just one number, and if there's only one of something, uh, then you don't see a number at all. A deadly go-kart and a pretty sunset. This is so weird. And a broken tractor. This game is so surreal sometimes. So this is about it. I'm pretty happy with it as a second release. This is probably what the first release should have been. Uh, I'll keep fixing bugs, I'll keep working on it. Uh, again, I welcome all feedback. Uh, edge cases, you know, if you have better settings for the default uh, limits. Thank you for watching.